Hello and welcome back to part 2 of our presentation on how to animate a PowerPoint sequence. So this part is the part that's going to deal with the actual animation side of things. So we have our drawing there, all prepared, line weights added, line dash set, um, line colour and line arrows all set um, from our previous installment. So we're going to start off with our animations for this here. Um, within PowerPoint we um, can first of all use our animations tab so if I select animations up along the top here it brings up my animations ribbon so here you can see my animations ribbon and then we can add our animations pane so I just start here animations pane will bring up my animation pane which will deal with all my individual animations so you can see at the moment this is blank so there's no animation set up for my piece so looking at my object I'm just going to set off some key kind of animations that we'd use um, you can see I have an arc that I want to be able to draw as if it was swinging in I have a series of lines that I want to be able to draw as if they were been drawn from left to right or from top to bottom or bottom to top um, and I have a series of small arcs that I might want to draw in so we'll go through just how to set that up and how to do things in some ways as efficiently as possible um, before animating the likes of my arcs and that I'm going to just insert a small oval here like that or a little small dot just over where I want the point of my compass to be added so you can add the likes of a clip art of a compass if you wanted but in general we're just trying to keep things as close to what students would see on their sheet as possible um, a handy little tip as well when drawing in the likes of ovals now you could draw it in CAD but sometimes things are a little bit yeah, sometimes things are just easier to draw it within PowerPoint um, to draw in my oval if I want to draw it for, say centered as a circle if I push control shift and alt all three at the same time I can draw in my little oval and it keeps things nice and circular there we go like so um, so there's my oval and you can see it's nice circular it's not going to be long or uh, an elliptical shape so I'm going to just right click on that like we saw before format the shape and I'm going to just change the fill to red I'm going to change the line colour to no line so there's my little dot drawn in so I want to animate this dot so I select my animation pane so there's my animation ribbon or at my animation tab and to add my animation I just simply apply an animation so the standard ones at the moment are green are for any entry animations if I click the drop down menu here I can see any emphasis things like say if I wanted just something to highlight like the pulse like the flash on a spot or to change colour or the red ones here are to things to exit out so if you want something to fade or disappear out so we want this guy to appear instantly all at the one time so we just click appear and you can see that animation we have a little number beside it and over here we have the animation appears in our animation pane now at the moment you can see we have a little mouse beside it there which means that the animation will start on click up here we have a little drop down menu where we can change that to with the previous animation or after a previous animation if you want a series uh, a sequence one after the other you also have the delay button which will mean that if you want something to happen after something else but you might want a small delay of a couple of seconds you can set that as part of it so that's our guy there like that and um, say as part of my second animation or a second sequence I might want this line here to be drawn and um, I can select the line and I can maybe make him wipe in so look as if he's been drawn from the left to the right um, just as a pencil would be drawn so that's known as the wipe animation so again green for entrance I set the wipe animation now as this happens uh, the this default for that is that it animates from the ground upwards so what I want I want this to go from the left to the right so if I select the uh, animation itself you can see there's my animation select the line it will highlight the animation over here I can select effect options from the left so that will appear as if it's been struck with a pencil from the left to the right and that's my wipe animation and again you can see this happens on click we can see the duration is 0.5 of a second so if I wanted it to happen slower I can increase that um, and you can see my little bar here indicates the length and the duration of that so and again I can move that around forward and back if I want a little bit of a delay 
and um, so start on zero. So the next thing then to do is to animate my construction arc here. So I want him to look as if he's been swung around with a compass. So I'm going to select him and I'm going to add in a wheel animation. So wheel is literally like been struck with a compass. And again, instead of going up, down, left or right, we have spokes when it comes to this. So you can have two spokes, three spokes, four spokes, five spokes, but we want one spoke. So it looks as if it's been one thing been swung around. And that's going to give us our animation. Again, when I select this guy here, just for a preview, he appears. He will appear from the left to the right. And there's our guy, like that, wiping around. Now, we can't see it happening here because this black is in the way. So, but when we apply the animation to that um, afterwards, um, then we'll be able to see that. That won't be in front of it anymore. In fact, we can do that now. If we just select this guy here, add animation, or we can just select um, wipe. I'm going to make it from above to the top, make it look as if it's been drawn from the middle out. And then I'm going to select this black arc here, and again, wheel. And that will create our animation. So let's have a look at the preview now. You can see the black arc is no longer there, because he is associated with an animation. So he's appearing from the left. This guy will appear as an arc. This guy will appear, and then we have our finished construction there like that. So that's I mean one example. Also as well, say if you want to have a number of things happen one after the other, um, like say our arcs here like that, you can animate them all at the one time. So if I select control or shift, whichever you want, I can select multiple things all at the one time. And I can add my animation. So I want them to wipe. So you can see, they all happen all at the one time. So when you click the first one, they all happen all at the one time. Or I can set that, that they all happen after the previous. So they all happen one after the other. And you can see your time here. When one finishes, the next thing starts. I'm going to select the first one there and just change him back to on click. So um, likewise, you I mean, say the likes of this animation, you might want him, he's set for appearing from below. So we might want that to happen from the the right. And let's have a look at that. So there's our compass. He's going to come across like that. Our arc comes in, line comes along, our finished arc like so, and then these will come in one after the other. Um, now you can see the sequence isn't exactly as I want it here. If I was drawing this really I want these arcs to come in before this finished line is drawn in and before this line is drawn in here so even though I have them animated I can change around the order of my animations so with this line here you can see there's my animation associated with that I can have that by dragging him down below he now happens after my arcs same thing applies this arc here I can drag him down below and that's these arcs are going to happen first and then the uh, final lines are going to be drawn in. Um, a couple of other little things. Um, if you wanted to say have a dot appear here like that, you can just copy your dot, but it will actually bring in the animation with it. So, let's say when I want to draw this arc, I want to have my a dot appear here beforehand. So I can select this. If I hold Control, I can just drag my little dot over here. And you can see there's my oval appearing here with my animation. So whatever animation this guy has, this guy will keep. So again, I want him to happen before this guy appears. So I'm going to drag my oval and have him appearing here before like that. So this happens. Then the next click, this happens here. And like that, we can do the same thing for each one of these. If I just click this guy here, I can copy him down so before this animation here happens so freeform 50 drag him and that'll happen like so so it's very quick and um, to just move him up there to 451 it's very quick to set up an animation sequence in fact once you have some of the animations already set in uh, it makes life a little bit even easier again so
and like so there we have each of our points like that and again we can rearrange them backwards and forwards depending so my preview so far my dot my line my arc will come in and then I have my series of animations like that um, you can see now we might want things to fade out, say the likes of our arrows and our arcs, to add an extra animation. So these all have an animation associated, but to add an extra animation, you can see that we, uh, we go up here to add animation, and we can make them all fade out. So if I select each of my points, or I can just drag a box over each of them, and if I want to shift, it will allow me to drag a further box. There's my construction all selected. I go to add animation. Now if I just selected fade from here, it will replace all the existing animations. So it won't add it on, it will replace it. So I go to add animation, fade out, you can see they'll all fade out. And I, again I can select whether that's fast or slow with my time here like so. So again, one click and they will all fade out all at the one time. So click, and there's my animation sequence. My final line comes in, and then my construction fades out. So, it is actually quite quick, and I suppose a little bit of practice goes a long way with these things, but once you get into the practice of it, really, I mean, you do get quite quick at each of the animations. So, the next series will be on just little tips and tricks for further animations, and how to colour in things, and how to, say, um, add a background, or how to add, um, say, like some shading that you can fade in afterwards. So hopefully this is, you're finding this useful. Um, thank you very much.